you're still looking for a spot to sit, there are plenty of chairs that are available over here. You can have a spot to sit. To our veterans and their families and members of our community, welcome. We're glad that you could find a few minutes on this day to come join us for this event. For our students, we welcome you also. This is an important day in our school year. It's a day that's held for this ceremony annually as it has been for many, many years. And it's a day to remember. Remembering somebody in your family, likely, a day to remember somebody who served in one of the branches of the armed forces. Chances are you know somebody who has. A grandparent, perhaps one of your parents, an aunt or an uncle. In some cases, right now, a few of you have a brother or a sister currently serving. Who among you knows somebody who served at some point in the armed forces? Now just look around. That's almost all of you. Today is a day to remember those people. To just say thank you. We won't forget you ever. If you, it's a grandparent or somebody you don't see very often, knowing that you have an early release today, it would be a lovely gesture for you to just call them up and say, hey, I was thinking about you. And I just wanted you to know. It would be a lovely gesture on your part. Today is just a day about remembering them. It's not a day about politics or policy. It's just a day to say thank you. And you have been outstanding over the years of being incredibly respectful for the men and women that we honor. And I'm sure today will be no different. So we just thank you for that, and we welcome those of you who are our visitors. If you would please rise for the hosting of the call.
Please say and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Thank you for coming to the Mon Ward Veterans Day program. We appreciate the school hosting this event every year. You may stand a few times today, veterans, but I'm going to ask you to stand because this is what the day is all about. So please stand up to be recognized. All veterans. men and women that just stood in front of you and some beside you served World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and all in between. Didn't matter whether they served overseas, here in the States, they served this country and gave us the freedoms that we have today. If you look out at the wall of remembrance out here, you see hundreds of veterans that have served from this community. Some of those today have poppies on them, a little uh, decal that Miss Barry put on those World War I veterans. Because a hundred years ago today, we were celebrating the end of World War I. And those men and women that were fighting during World War I were coming home. So we remember all veterans on that 100th anniversary. We certainly remember all of those veterans from World War I that served for us. You've heard me say several times in different programs that Mount Hoare has a long history of men and women serving in the armed forces. Back in World War I, that was no exception. We were a small, small rural community. If you took all of the areas around here, if you looked at Pine Bluff, Mount Moore, Blue Mounds, Mount Vernon, all the, all the areas that we would consider within our school district today, we had a few thousand people, women, men, and children in this area. Of those, 300 men served. 12 never came home. Our Legion Post, Frankie Malone, post number 113, is named after Frankie Malone. Frank was killed when a high explosive round hit him in France, a few months short of the end of the war. So when those veterans came home, they remembered one of their own and named this American Legion Post after him. The Legion Post here in town is happy that we have representatives here from the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Vietnam Veterans Chapter 4, because we are all veterans. We all come together. It's all about serving our country. And I'll tell you that most of these men and women that you see sitting amongst you would raise their right hand again today if they could do it. They'd be back out there serving you. The band, the orchestra, the choir adds so much to every ceremony that we have here. And we truly appreciate that. So thank you. Just so that we don't forget, 
we have members of classes from Mount Horb High School that are still serving today. Marnie Skinner is out there. We've got students who graduated last year that volunteered to serve our country as well. Eric Allison, Gabor Schlosser, and Caleb Stapleman all joined the service after high school and are serving today. So we have veterans that are with us today and we have service members that are still serving. We appreciate everyone's service. I appreciate the fact that you're here to say thank you to veterans for their service. And we'll continue on with the program. I don't want to go too long because we want to be outside firing rifle salutes at 11 o'clock if we can do it. So that's our goal. Thank you.
To this day, it continues to be an emotional salute to the men and women who have given their lives in order for protecting the lands, the people, and the dreams we cherish most. We hope that the musical setting of these immortal words will move you to remember and be grateful. privilege to introduce our speaker. I say speaker because guest speaker would be wrong. Don has been in this community for more than 40 years. He's a commander in the Veterans of Foreign Wars, a member, an active member of the Vietnam Veterans Chapter 4, and an active member of the American Legion. There's nobody out there that cares more about making sure that we honor veterans than Don. And so I couldn't think of anyone better than to have Don come and talk to you on this Veterans Day. Don Hartman. I am truly humbled and honored to be addressing my fellow veterans and patriotic community of Mount Horeb today. We the people are here to observe Veterans Day. Exactly 100 years ago, 
yesterday at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, World War I ended. Originally called Armistice Day, it commemorated the end of the Great War, World War I. At the time, President Woodrow Wilson was quoted as saying it was the war to end all wars. But that was not the case, as two decades later, the United States would become involved in World War II. Four and a half decades after it was named Armistice Day, in a proclamation signed on October 8, 1954, by Dwight Eisenhower, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month was officially changed to Veterans Day. The official, the fish, that, this officially restores the observance of Veterans Day to November 11th. The change not only preserves the history historical significance of the date, but also focuses on the importance of Veterans Day as a day to celebrate and honor Americans veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good of all. The American Gold Boys of World War I engaged in a different kind of war than those fought in the past. They fought in trenches in a war that included naval, air, ground, and, and ground battles. They not only were dodging bullets, bombs, and artillery, but also were subjected to poison gases. Trench warfare was an extremely grueling form of warfare, in which each side constructed elaborate trenches and dugout systems opposing each other along a front. The area between the opposing sides was known as no man's land. In a brief moment of sanity during World War I, on Christmas Day in 1914, Allied soldiers and troops of the Axis Army stopped shooting and started to sing Christmas carols and play football together in no man's land. Following that brief holiday truce, they returned to their trenches and resumed fighting. As I researched the facts of World War I, I found that interesting statistics that may surprise most military veterans. The question is, in which battle of any of our nation wars did we suffer the highest number of Americans killed in action? The answer is the Battle of the Argonne Forest. It was the last major battle of World War I. The 47 days of the battle resulted in the deaths of 26,277 Americans, the highest of any battle Americans fought in in their history. In addition, 95,786 were wounded in action. And those two numbers rank the Battle of the Argonne Forest as the deadliest battle in American history. World War I started in 1914 and officially ended at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. 116,516 Americans died in World War I and 204,000 were wounded. Today we especially honor those brave men and women who stepped forward and served our country in World War I. Veterans Day is special to all veterans. It is the day our nation remembers all veterans, not just from World War I to the present, but all the way back to the American Revolution in 1776. For veterans today, here today, our legacy will not only be measured by what we've done in the past, but also what we do in the future. This is an especially poignant day for the Mount Horeb area, area, as veterans in the village of Mount Horeb in the process of building and establishing a Veterans Memorial in our community. The Mount Horror Veterans Memorial Park will be a tribute to all veterans and veterans families. It will be a sacred place that will create a dignified serenity where all veterans may gather, meditate, reminisce, and heal. Families can gather and remember today's veterans and also the men and women who have passed, forever honoring their service and sacrifice. It is important to note that the unique design of the memorial was a vision created by veterans. Each component has a powerful symbolism that will stir the emotion of those who experience it. The stunningly beautiful white granite Freedom Tower perched on top of a black granite Pentagon base will be surrounded by paper bricks with the names of several hundred military veterans. The five flags of the military service will surround the centerpiece area and will be the heart and soul of the memorial. The outside of the five points of the Pentagon footprint will be anchored by various component, components honoring veterans organizations, POW, KIA, MIAs, Purple Heart recipients, and the most prominent spot, 
flag of the United States of America. Each component will create a different response and emotion from all who visit the site. The challenge we face in gathering all the names that the men and women have served today are not forgotten. We especially want to focus on those who have long since passed who would otherwise be forever forgotten. In the military pavement section of the memorial, you will see names that go far, as far back as the American Revolution. As I stated before, the heart and soul of the memorial will be the veterans paper bricks. Here are some of the inscriptions on, on veterans paper bricks you will encounter when the memorial is built. John Reedy, veteran of American of the American Revolutionary War, 1776. Also on that paper is the name of the great, great, great grandson, Lieutenant J.G. Robert Donald Woodburn, U.S. Navy, Korean War veteran. David Roach, Civil War, 1863-1865, U.S. Navy, a coal keeper on the USS Savannah and the USS Metacom, a wooden side wheel sketch, steamship, David Roach is the grandfather of former Mount Hort teacher, Mary Spade. Also from the Civil War, Sigurd Chesterson, 1861-1865. Sigurd and his brothers Tarji and Oslite all enlisted together in 1861 in the infantry, Company C, 12, of Wisconsin. Sigurd is the great grandfather of Vietnam veteran David Stenson, 1964, Mount Hort High School graduate, and he's here today. Our memorial will remember World War I veterans. One of the grand paper inscriptions will honor my grandfather. It will read Our Private Herman Hartman, U.S. Army, World War I, 1918, Company A, 9th Infantry, 2nd Division, veteran of the Battle of the Argonne Forest. Another paper's engraved inscription, that of a veteran of World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. It will read Sergeant Major Gerald E. Pohl, U.S. Navy, USS Missouri, World War II, the Korean War, 1947 to 1953, U.S. Army from 1953 to 1970, 101st Airborne, 50th Signal Battalion, 5th Special Forces, Vietnam, 1960 to 1969. It is the duty of all veterans in the village of Mount Hoare to gather and place names in our memorial so future generations will be reminded and remember where their freedom came from and who sacrificed for it. So to all students and to all parents, you are all be given and assigned homework tonight, today. It is not just the duty of the veterans to gather these names, but the duty of all to look into your family's history and identify those who have served. Now is the time to research and bring names forward so they will be remembered for their sacrifice and their service our country. When finished, the Veterans Memorial's stunning beauty will not only be a morale boost to the veterans, but a point of pride to a community who has celebrated its many successes from the service and sacrifice of area veterans. To have this showcase, the entrance of our village will be a lasting and fitting tribute to our veterans and a welcoming beacon for, veteran, uh, for visitors to Mount Laura. We are well on our way in planning and fundraising for the Mount Hoare Veterans Memorial. The whole process is so much more than fundraising, bricks, mortar, and granite. It is about emotions, tears, and memories. This project is about people and a place to gather and remember the sacrifice of those names we would be placing in the memorial. It is not just their names that are important, it is their stories that will hopefully be shared and remembered by their families forever. Facing a daunting task, the Mount Hoare Veterans Memorial Association's very determined group of citizens hoped to raise $450,000 in 2019. It is our hope that at the 11th, day, 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in our near future, the Mount Hoare Veterans Memorial will become a reality. God bless you all and God bless America.
as we conclude our program, we're going to uh, play the Armed Forces Service Song. And I'm sure our veterans will stand when their moment comes. But this is also a day of remembering. So for all of you, what I asked earlier, if you knew of someone in your family who had served, your way of honoring them today would be that you would stand when that song was played. And remember them. And for those of you who suddenly are thinking, I'm not sure which one they were in. When you make that phone call later today, you could ask.
test and you could come forward to uh, give students instructions on the next part of our morning. Caitlin, so we found the one gas fed. I don't know who. She said, oh yeah, I hear local people going home school. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. You are welcome to go outside if you can go outside if you choose. Otherwise, you need to go out and make your day in the school building. Thank you for your response. What about mom?